YouTube. What's going on? It's your boy Buddha back in the building for another last Claudia video. We are finally doing the Buddha showcase for our boy Ardeen here who has usurped every character before him and become your boy's favorite unit on the roster. Hands down, no questions asked. So, as we like to do in these five-star unit showcases, we're going to go ahead and give him the respect of finalizing his fifth enhancement process and unlocking the ward. If you guys have noticed, I pretty much stopped doing the four-star showcases. I think Last Claudia has done a good job of giving us different ways of grinding up materials in order to ascend these characters to their new potential five stars because five stars while they are still limited I guess arguably they're not as limited as they were when they first released so it doesn't feel as much of a luxury as much as it is the end goal of building a character especially at this point with new units coming out as five stars that is just their expected performance when you finalize building them so that's the reason we kind of stopped doing those four star showcases let me know if you feel any type of way about that i think we get enough information out and all of the information within the five star showcase is still very relevant if you can't quite ascend your characters and you have to keep them at that level 100 point uh, it's still going to be very very helpful all the information in this video so there we go quite a nice uh, ward that Ardeen gives here no attribute damage plus one percent of course as we continue to unlock these wards those percentage those small percentage increase are are going to accumulate into pretty effective and substantial numbers over time as we know now we got the nice ward symbol unlocked as we can see and of course your boy is going to be six awakening this guy but that's just a matter of getting another 600 souls in order to do that. So that's not happening anytime soon. We're not postponing the showcase until then. But we can see the man's base. Everything basically. He's going to get a couple stat bumps as we awaken to 5 and 6. But nothing that's going to significantly change his performance from what we're going to see today. Uh, we can see the HP 79, 37, MP 301. Strength is a very fat 1597. Big, big strength stat. Defense 1066, int 822, and mind uh, M or MND 890. Those are where his stats really kind of fall short. Abilities, we know we've seen a lot of this already in the character reveal video that Adis put out. And then traits, of course, bump up to their final potential when you get them to 5 star. 120 out of 120 board unlocked. So what I want to do is approach these character showcases a little differently. Yes, we're doing another restructuring because I think I want to try and help a broader player base. A broader, and when I say that, try to help new players understand the logic that goes into doing character building. Uh, I've talked about how your character builds as you approach endgame, as you acquire more skills to teach your characters, they should be changing and adapting to whatever battle and scenario you're fighting. But at the start, when you're trying to figure out your initial build for a character, you want to look at what they come with, what skills can emphasize their performance, and what skills are going to cover things that they're lacking that can be very essential for the way that they perform. So we're going to kind of try and break down what Ardeen comes with and then what skills and areas I believe you're going to want to place the learnable skills on him and allocate your SC in order to make up and make Ardeen perform at that top tier level that I and a lot of endgame uh, players are experiencing. So looking at the base kit, right, everything with the SC cost of zero is what Ardeen comes with innately, so it doesn't cost anything. We do have a 92 SC available to us with that 90 SC naturally, and then the one prism that they gave us during this event it comes with these magic spells, the Insurrectionary Anima. Still having trouble saying that. This is going to be great for debuffing the enemies if you're struggling to hit cap, decreasing by an extra 20% will definitely help you close that damage gap. Uh, all of his seals, right, these are very important. 
I personally wouldn't get too caught up in what each of these do and trying to come up with a an all-around build, right? Don't be good looking to try and do a status ailment build on top of a breaker build, on top of a DPS burst build. That's going to suck up a lot of SC and it's going your your return on investment for skills when you try and do all around builds like that, it's usually not going to end very well. My recommendation is to figure out what battle you're taking on, uh, look at whichever seal that you're most interested in using for that battle and kind of forming your build around that. Luckily most of it involves DPS so we'll talk about that more as we scroll down. Of course he comes with some basic stat ups. Fighting Spirit is one of the best because it combines strength and HP for your physical type damage dealers. Uh, 3 and 4, 18%, not going to complain. Illusion and Sand Step. Now, our Dean kind of comes with two forms of evasiveness, and Sand Step boosts his movement speed. So as you can see already, the chance of evading physical attacks, that's just kind of a bonus. It's going to make him dodge a lot of damage that's being inflicted on him but pay attention to the fact that they are including movement speed into his kit that's going to be pretty important as we move along soldier mastery is great when unit has soldier type strength plus 10 percent physical attacks are effective against snipers now there's a bit of confusion on these types of skills uh, soldier mastery and dragon buster alike the fact that we now have these Skills that aren't killers or slayers or geysers telling us that physical attacks are effective against a certain type. Our impression, our initial assumption is that this replaces that said killer or slayer. However, we've, Tweaks and I specifically, have done testing with these in multiplayer. And there is a clear difference, right, when we are using this rather than a slayer and special boost and or a slayer slash killer skill and special boost there is a decrease in damage pretty noticeably however lake has confirmed in the data mines that these types of skills should be replacing your killers and slayers because it's a binary thing either you're effective against something or you're not it's not like a skill like Bayland has diamond blade which gives you 30% extra damage to certain types. That specifies how much damage you're getting extra. It doesn't count as this binary slayer effect. When it tells you that your damage is effective, that should be replacing the said slayer or killer effect. So there's a little weirdness going on. I'm not sure if these skills aren't performing properly, maybe in multiplayer. However, as it stands right now, I do believe that these types of skills are replacements for the slayers so take that with a grain of salt but let's keep on moving auto braves great because we're going to get that plus 20 percent continuous effect uh, saves a 7 sc auto protections nice minus 20 percent damage crusade because they filled up his board with those seals and other unique abilities they had to give him this unique ability to combine critical and haste effects Massive SC saves in one skill, so we're not mad at that. Pride 2 is going to be nice at max HP, strength plus another 30%, which will be pretty easily obtainable if you are able to build him correctly for that HP sustain. We'll go over that more later. No attribute attack raise 2, no attribute critical raise, uh, nice attack damage multiplier, and then crit and crit damage multiplier. Weak point boost, that's going to synchronize with the two seals, Flame Call and Stone Call, since we know that RD naturally is a no attribute attacker. So not until you add an element to him that he can take advantage of this damage multiplier weak point boost. Pose of Honor, that's going to help some sustain with his MP. We know that his MP drainage is very demanding with these different seals. Even if you just stick with the power charge, you're still using 5 MP every single skill that you attack with. So keep these things in mind as I'm mentioning them because this is what's going to frame how we want to build our Dean moving forward. Blessed Speed, more movement speed, okay? Now we've seen two skills that are giving him movement speed. Kind of cues you in that making this guy speedy is going to be in your best benefit. Comes with dual wield, so equip those two weapons, get that free 14 SC skill slapped on the boy. Uh, sword high boost, another damage multiplier, machine boost, machine mega boost, more damage multipliers, which is great. Quick reload, one of my favorite skills, I think a lot of the community's favorite skill. Uh, since 
it has a 25% chance to give you 50% SCT for whichever skill stock you're using. His S2, as you know if you've watched the podcast, is so freaking spammable that this skill makes his DPS output ridiculous. Because more often than not, or I should say one out of four times that you pop off the skill, you're going to gain a bunch of SCT back just for using the skill. It's amazing. Indomitable Spirit, when lethal damage is taken, recover 50% HP and then gives an extra 30% skill damage. Now, this is a little bit of sustain, but if you notice, the man doesn't come with a lot of HP sustained. So, another area to keep in mind as you're looking through this guy's kit. Combo Master 2, another damage multiplier if you get above 50 hits. Chance Drive is going to synchronize well if you want to use him as a breaker, or it's just going to work well if you're in a situation where you do break the boss. If you're using him, Ardeen as a breaker, or if you're using another character as a breaker, the dude's getting the Chance Drive damage boost, and from his seal, don't forget, he has another damage increase when characters are fainted or in break. Giant Killing is going to help another damage multiplier against your boss monsters. And then Revenge Heart, when unit is incapacitated, living allies recover medium HP and receive that defensive buff for the defense in mind. I assume this kind of ties in. Uh, that Zero said that this seemed like a lore type of thing. Yes. Spoiler alert. Three, two, one. The man is the leader of a rebellion army, or a rebel army, in this new arc. So I imagine this is his leadership quality. If he goes down, the rest of the people are going to revolt and gain this resolve to keep fighting. So I imagine that's kind of where that plays into effect. This doesn't really help the rest of his kit, just kind of a nice bonus skill to get at the end. So that covers everything Ardeen comes with innately. So we know he's a physical type attacker. We know that he's no attribute DPS. We know that we can he can switch to these different seals and these different uh, elements within the seals. And he comes with a lot of nice SC saves in terms of like critical effects. He's got some nice stat boosts already. And he's got a lot of damage multipliers innately. And a lot of speed, I should say. Coming with Blessed Speed's already very nice for a physical DPS, but then he also has the Sand Step skill, which gives him that extra speed. I believe innately he has plus three speed. Every time you see adding speed, it doesn't really tell you unless you look at Lake's Gold Mine, right? The website with all the best information in Last Cloudy. You should check it out. The link will be in the comments. But you won't know how much, but each item has a specific amount of speed that it gives, and we count those in tickers of one, right? So plus one speed, plus two speed, plus three speed. I think I just inhaled some dust or something. I just started coughing like a madman, but I think we're okay now. What was I talking about? Speed, right? So we know that our Dean with the Blessed Speed and Sand Step comes with plus three speed innately. So adding more speed to this man is just going to make him perform better. That's kind of a general rule for all physical DPS that we can currently see. There are always exceptions and reasons why maybe you wouldn't want to, but in general, I think it's a pretty good analysis when we're talking about physical type attackers to say, you want them to be speedy, you want them to be a bit self-sustaining in terms of regaining HP and MP, and you want them dealing damage cap every single hit, white numbers and crit numbers included. So where does our Dean fall a bit short in those areas? Well, I can tell you the main one is going to be his self-sustaining abilities. The only things that we can see of him self-sustaining, his MP and HP, are Pose of Honor. And this Indomitable Spirit, right? This is a very nice surviving lethal damage skill, but it's not nearly enough to keep Ardeen alive in tricky situations, especially in like long-term fights. Wave-by-wave wave content, and if you have a really good support on your team, which you'll want, you may not notice it, but as soon as you get into a really tricky fight, you're going to see that Ardeen is just not kind of holding his weight. He might be dealing very good damage, but he can get taken out very quickly by any type of enemies that are dealing ample damage. So we're going to want to make up for that. And then, of course, uh, in terms of damage multipliers, Ardeen has a ton of good ones already. 
right? Sword high boost is great. Machine boost, machine mega boost. Uh, no attribute attack, raise two. But here's the thing. He doesn't come with some very key, key physical damage multipliers that are going to propel him to consistent damage caps. That being special boost in order to synchronize with his innate slayers, including Dragon Buster, which gives him uh, a, an effective Dragon Slayer, and Soldier Mastery, which gives him an effective Sniper Slayer. So he's missing out on about 50% damage by not having special boost innate. And going back to Dragon Buster, here's the thing. This skill does give him a hard cap of 59,999. What is a hard cap, you might be asking? Well, that means that no other uh, cap-raising things like equipment or skills is going to propel Ardeen past this 59,999 if you set your seal to Dragon Buster in battle. This means that reaching this number consistently is going to be the main focus if you're going into a Dragon Battle trying to hit this numbers, especially with him being an innate dual wielder. You gotta remember, dual wield, if I can find it, uh, decreases each hit by 40%. So instead of one attack of 100%, you now have two attacks of 60%. Now what you want to do in order to nullify that decrease or that nerf is by propelling, giving him a shit ton of damage multipliers so that you're dealing your damage cap with both hits, therefore uh, nullifying this whole 60% concept and therefore you're dealing two times your damage cap. And let me just tell you, in order to propel him to a number like 60,000 with that 40% damage nerf, you need a lot, a lot, a lot of damage multipliers in this man's kit. So, with all that being considered, what skills are going to make up for where Ardeen is lacking in these areas? Well, let me just start with speed because he's not lacking, quote unquote, in speed, but in order to give him even more speed, it doesn't cost that much, right? If you were around during the Near Automata collab, you should have high speed shopkeep. This is a plus three movement speed before you take any damage, which is going to be incredible as soon as the battle starts because your man Ardeen, if you just have high speed shopkeep on him for one SC, not expensive at all, he's gonna have plus six speed. He's gonna be zooming all over the map. His first two skills do require him to get in the line of sight of an enemy, so the quicker you can get into that position, the faster you're launching off your attacks. That is the emphasis on giving speed to your physical type DPS. Another one is fast speed, as we can see here. Another one SC for a 40 second buff, giving him that speed effect. Now you can have supports that have things like speed phaser, I'm thinking of Tinkili, or just give one of your supports speed and cast it, but why not just avoid needing to go into the UI, cast it, when you can just have it immediately upon battle. Start giving another plus one speed. So that's what I like to do. I like to give this man both of these so that immediately at the battle start, my boy Ardeen has plus seven speed in order to be speedy as hell, as you're going to see in uh, a lot of the battles that we're taking him into. I'm gonna rearrange this uh, skill board so that we can see default, because that's gonna group a lot of relevant skills together, making this whole concept of explaining, like using sustained skills and damage multipliers, it's gonna make it a little easier to see everything in one spot. So we gave our man Ardeen basically all the speed comp that I want to within the skill board. Now I'm gonna think about his sustain. I'm skipping over all of these stats. Here's a big tip, guys. When you're a super, super new player and all you have available are stat increases, sure, go ahead and use them. But as you expand your available skills and arcs and teachable things, these are a waste of SC. I'm just gonna tell you right now, uh, maybe in niche situations you can argue, well, I had HP up plus two and HP up max and Ardeen survived. Well, I'm telling you, if you have the proper damage and the proper sustain and the proper team comp, using a bunch of HP ups and attack ups and defense ups, it's really not necessary for this guy to perform at his peak performance. Now, something I did forget to mention while I was kind of describing this whole uh, thinking about what your character needs in order to perform well. Uh, I need to go back to the seals 
that this man has. He is extremely MP dependent, right? All of his seals, depending on which one you pick, they only increase up from five, right? A base five MP to use this power charge seal, that only goes up as you look at these other charges or it stays at five, right? So poison charge also uses five, but then heavy charge uses 15, flame call, stone call use 10, and then dragon buster uses 50 MP. So that also tells us that our Dean does want a ton of MP. So similar to the alchemy units from Full Metal Alchemist, it's pretty easy to identify that this man wants a lot of MP. Now, with that in mind, you'd be like, okay, let me just stack all my MP ups on him, which is a very fair assumption. And I don't think it would be a bad idea to do this so that our Dean always has a ton of MP. But there is another layer of consideration and, and that does go back to the sustain ability that our Dean has that I want to mention. Now, instead of using four, six, seven SC on these MP ups, I'm going to take these off and just use MP up max for a plus 20% MP boost while having that 7SC in reserve to do other things as you're going to see as I continue to create this build for our Dean. And again, another disclaimer, this is all dependent on what you have available to you. If you don't have another 7SC worth of skills to spend in other areas to make our Dean improve, then go ahead and slap all the MP ups on him just to cover that area of help that our Dean does need. He needs a ton of MP to sustain his performance. Moving back to sustain, of course we know you want your physical DPS to be using Proud Force Critical Hits, Recover HP. Now, if you really need help with that HP recovery, I don't blame you if you want to slap on like a Magic Defense Up Max or an Auto Matisse or Fast Matisse, but with the amount of hit counts that Ardeen has and a very, very comparable uh, crit package already, right? He comes with that Crusade ability, which gives him plus 15% uh, crit. And then I do believe he has, no, he doesn't have any critical ups innate in his kit. So that is a consideration. Maybe you want to slap an extra critical up on him. I'll go ahead and do that. Give him three SC for critical up. So now he's got a 20% uh, critical rate on all of his hits. And then of course he has his innate crit rate, which they don't tell us right off the bat. It would be really nice actually if they gave us a crit percentage uh, stat here. I don't know how y'all feel about that, but I would like that a lot because a lot of characters do scale innately. They have an innate crit percentage that I think someone told me scales between like three and 10%. Maybe that's completely wrong, but it'd be nice to know what that is off the bat so that we know how much we're getting when we do decide to use and uh, build these units. So I'll go ahead and give him an extra 5% crit rate. So I know that we are at least getting plus 20% crit rate on top of this guy. 3 SC for 5%, not too shabby. That's going to just help with his proud force, which then is going to sustain his HP very well. That's what we want to make sure is that our Dean is constantly at full HP in order to take advantage of the pride ability, the pride two ability that comes innate in his kit, because that does require him to be at max HP. Moving on, you can see the list of killers and slayers. Of course, this list will accumulate as you obtain more arcs that have these skills, but when you're talking about your physical DPS, you want to make sure they are taught every single Slayer available to them so that you can customize the battle. You can customize them for whatever battle they are going into. It's always in your best interest to try and reserve 8 to 9 SC because you can see those are the two Slayer costs that we see. Reserve that amount of SC so that you don't get caught lacking building out your unit and you're able to kind of switch freely between them, right? Like I could easily, if I'm using a Machine Slayer, which is an 8 SC, and then I need to move to a God Slayer, which is 9, go ahead, take off Machine Slayer, and then a skill like Fast Speed, which you saw was 1 SC. Uh, so just try and keep that in mind when you're building. Make sure you can interchange your Slayers, and it's not too big of a hassle reorganizing your entire build. When it comes to like damage mitigation on this guy, he does come with auto protection, which is a minus 20% physical damage reduction. Uh, unless you're trying to go for like a one man army build, 
you're going to be sacrificing a lot of potential in terms of DPS with this guy. So uh, me personally, I'd rather maximize his role as a physical DPS and then let my team comp make up for like heavy, heavy healing or heavy, heavy damage mitigation and support in the form of SM Tyria or using a support like Lena with different elemental walls, right? Let them do the job in damage mitigation while you completely maximize the amount of damage output with your DPS character. So in terms of like skills, like even like defense ups and these things like shields, right? These are not cheap. 7 SC for only 10% damage mitigation to a specific type. Uh, Luxeus's protection, uh, minus 7%. I think this is from a UR arc, but, or no, this is from, um, this is from the four lords, right? The four lords of ruin. Regardless, heavy SC for very minimal damage mitigation. It's not going to be worth it to be spending your SC in this area to try and make Ardeen a little more tanky. Hold your SC for skills that are going to enhance his already well-performing aspects. So here we go, we're already at special boost. Since he comes with basically two innate slayers, special boost should probably be active all the time. Because when you do go up against those two specific types, snipers and dragons, you're going to now be hitting plus 100% damage rather than just plus 50%. Also something I see a lot of players messing up on. These types of skills, auto critical, fast critical, uh, let's say auto brave, fast brave, these do not stack, okay guys? If you see that they have the same icon, which is like for brave, they have this red icon, that means that these abilities will not stack. If you have auto brave, you don't need fast brave. If you have auto critical, you don't need fast critical and vice versa. And I'm talking about strictly for the stat boost. Uh, of course, there's the difference in time, right? Fast Brave is a 40 second buff for 2 SC while Auto Brave, or I should say like uh, Fast Critical is a 2 SC 40 second buff and Auto Critical is a 9 SC permanent buff. Those differences are to be should be taken into consideration. But if you're trying to get cheeky and give him more brave by putting on fast brave, that's not going to give you a return. You are now wasting two SC for nothing because these do not stack on top of each other. And what you need to keep into consideration is you might be building this guy like your boy Buddha. I will admit I literally did this and forget that he has the unique ability crusade, which stacks critical and haste effects. If you're looking through this and you're like me and you see, oh, he doesn't have auto crit or fast critical innate, let me just give him fast crit for a 40 second crit buff. I now just wasted two SC because the dude has critical in one of his unique abilities, okay guys? So pay attention to your character's unique abilities. Do not try and stack the same buffs on top of each other and you're going to have a lot more SC to use in actual uh, skills that affect the performance of your character. Here we have another sustained skill that can help a lot of players, especially once you get the Arc Phoenix Blow, Awaken. Okay, this is actually going to work very well with Ardeen and give him an extra layer of protection because this is going to recover HP and increase the certain stats and movement speed when close to death. That means that when Ardeen, that means that when Ardeen hits 30% in his health threshold he will basically recover to full health so since this is a near death recovery and then his skill indomitable spirit is a on death recovery or when or a lethal damage recovery you then have two layers of recovery that work very well with ardeen um, like i was saying when you're thinking about sustain and heavy damage mitigation you want to leave that usually to your actual support characters. However, I wouldn't be mad at you if you're going up against a tough multiplayer boss. You can't always rely on the other team supports and you want to use the 9SC in order to give Ardeen that extra layer of HP sustain, which then also comes with other benefits as well. So I don't think for a general build, Awaken is a bad move at all. So we're going to go ahead and use it. 
pride since he comes with pride too and now we have a very reliable way to keep our dean at max health while using skill stocks his criticals will hopefully recharge his hp up to max at a consistent basis we'll have pride too active but then i don't think it's a bad idea to give pride for 4 sc at max hp another strength plus 20 percent so at max hp this man's coming in with plus 50 percent You'll hear the controversial debate about, do stats matter in Last Claudia? The answer is yes, they matter. The argument is that our characters nowadays come with so much stat innately already, right? They have the ample amount of base stats that putting too much SC to then keep increasing those stats, you're getting a diminishing return rather than focusing that SC into more damage mods, which then actually increase the amount of damage that you're seeing by a percentage amount. The stat increases, are they can become very costly in SC with minimal returns. However, when you're talking about like a 50 and up percent increase in any specific stat, that is going to be pretty significant. So if we can keep our Dean at max HP, which consistently gives him a plus 50% strength buff for 4 SC, I'm not mad at it. And I think it's a very good way to build our Dean just to ensure a lot of big damage coming off of him right out of the gate. And Pride's not a hard skill to get. I think it's on R or at least an SR arc. So boom, we're going to keep that on him just for some extra stat building that's not costing us a lot of HP and synchronize as well with how we are sustaining the HP with our Dean and making up for that. Now we move into um, kind of our first exposure to more damage multipliers, these no attribute attack raises, right? Or I should say the attack raises. Our Dean will benefit greatly if you're not planning to switch his elements by using a skill like this, no attribute attack raise. The only thing is, it's an SC cost of 11. That is pretty, pretty hefty for only a 20% return. The justification with these attack raises is that if you notice, it doesn't specify physical, magic, or special damage. It's just all damage, including UR ultimates. So if we had a UR ultimate that dealt no attribute attack damage, this skill would help increase that UR arc's ultimate. So. It shouldn't be slept on how versatile the attack raises are, but when we're looking at a base build for a character, these are kind of the last things that you want to come back and look at after you've covered the essentials of building the character. Here we're moving a little bit back to sustain skills. Now, if you are just starting with Ardeen and you're moving through story content, these pose abilities are going to be your best friend. He comes with Pose of Honor, as we saw, which will help with his MP sustain. However, Pose of Glory, super, super important, usually, to equip this for your physical DPS. Pose of Victory, not always is needed so much when you're taking advantage of Proud Force. Your critical effect, your critical hits, the higher your crit rate is, it's going to be plenty of healing, as you will see in battle. Every crit's literally giving us a heal and a pretty substantial heal. So Pose of Victory, since that's only a on-kill proc, it's not going to be super helpful, especially if you're not fighting a lot of enemies at a time. So the Pose abilities are very specific and very beneficial when you are fighting wave-by-wave multi-enemy content. However, it's still for the cost of 2 SC, not going to hurt us too much. As you can see, we're only 34 out of 92. We've still got a lot of SC to use. I'm going to go ahead and po slap Pose of Glory uh, for this general DPS build in order to benefit him in the sustain realm for SCT and skill stock reserve. The ales are also nice, especially if you don't have anything else to spend your SC on, but only if you're fighting wave by wave content because you're only getting this benefit at the battle end. So when you load into wave two and further, you're getting these benefits. So you really need to identify the situations and the more common scenario you're going into when you're building kind of these sustain builds with your poses, with your ales. You gotta know what's gonna help you in whatever battle you're going into. For example, Tower of Trials, right? That is 90 floors of the majority wave-by-wave wave content multi-enemy, so 
things like Archangel's Blessing for that MP sustain, and your ales, and Pirate's Feast, and even multiplayer battles. These are going to benefit you greatly. However, if you're going on to fight a world boss, which you're just loading into the world boss with no prior waves before that, these are all wasting SC for your build because they're not helping you in that specific battle. I'm planning on doing maybe some videos centered around like SCT, how to sustain SCT, what skills are essential, and or uh, MP and HP, right? Things like that, which kind of deep dive into the different skills, when they should be used, and how you should be thinking about them when you're using them. So. Uh, let me know if you guys would be interested in that in the comments. Spirit Breath is a very, very nice skill to have because it does give you some SCT stock, three seconds to be exact, when you're getting healed. So if you have a team comp with a healer, I don't think it's a bad idea to slap Spirit Breath on uh, your physical DPS, especially for 4 SC, for even more skill stock sustain. However, if you're not going into a, uh, a battle with a healer you're gonna want to keep this off since it's literally not gonna help you unless you're like healing yourself for some reason with an active skill this like doesn't work with proud force sadly so uh, it's only manual healing so like if Tyria uses her s2 or her s3 I think one of her skills is a manual heal and then on top of that like any spells that do healing those are going to affect spirit breath activating or not not passive healing like awaken or proud force things like that so keep that in mind only use this when applicable but keep it off if you're not going into a battle with a healer this skill right here guys as we know going back to what rd needs help with he needs help with mp sustain you want him to have a lot of mp a lot of the time and goddess kiss is going to be one of the essential skills for this man especially since he is going to regenerate a ton of MP off of his normal attack since one, he's a dual wielder, and two, he's a no attribute attacker since you don't have to worry about any elemental resistances from other enemies. And this man has a ton of no attribute uh, damage boosters in his kit innately. You are going to get big MP procs from normal attacking. And don't get this skill confused. This only looks at your base regular attack damage. It does not activate off of things like extra attacks or pursuit attacks as they're also known. It only looks at, since Ardeen is dual wielding, his two base regular attack hits. It only looks at those damage numbers to calculate the amount of MP regenerated. So uh, don't try and add like a bunch of extra attacks thinking you're going to get extra MP. You're not it's only based off of the first two hits of your regular attacks but like i was saying since he's going to be dealing a very nice amount of damage due to the prior reasons i mentioned goddess kiss is going to be ardeen's best friend to keeping his mp pool filled for all of the other reasons he needs that mp i'm going to move back a little bit because i'm going to be taking ardeen into a wave by wave battle first i am going to give him pirate's feast right here it is 9SC, but since it's wave-by-wave wave content, there is no other skill that matches the, the, <laughs> the ability that this skill has. Because as soon as we get through Wave 1, skill, Wave 2 and onward, we're starting every battle with max amounts of skill stock, which make this guy absolutely ridiculous, right? Any physical DPS, Pirate's Feast is one of the best skills to use if you're going wave-by-wave. Wave. And we're going to be taking him into battle here, so we're going to be using Pirate's Feast initially. Beastly Banquet's a good substitute. That's going to give you one skill stock for all your skills. And then you got to keep in mind, as long as you can start with skill stock and quickly start getting your kills, that's going to synchronize with Post Glory very well to keep recharging that SCT back. Moving on to some very important skills that shouldn't be overlooked. Damage Multipliers, okay? Now these are conditional damage multipliers. I do have a video talking about how to reach max caps where I do mention a lot about these skills. So right, your Sky High, Sky Lord, Surprise Attack, Backstab, Terror Melt, and Terror Melt 2, right? Sky High and Sky Lord, I think those will help you if you don't have a lot of options. But in terms of Ardeen, it's only going to help him for his S3. His S3 is the only thing that can pick enemies up in the air. 
So because of that minority in ability that he has, I'm not going to be using the Sky abilities. What I do want to use is Surprise Attack and Backstab. For 6 SC, 50% plus 30%, 80% damage. That's a ridiculous amount of damage for the SC cost. And all it requires you to do is position yourself behind the enemy, which Ardeen does a fantastic job of doing with his S1. His S1 does teleport basically through the enemy and place him behind. So he's able to take advantage of backstab damage very efficiently with the use of his S1. So we're going to keep that. Terror Melth and Terror Melth 2, a combined 50% extra damage. Uh, that is going to be useful if you are taking advantage of, let's say, an Anula Melth and uh, Poison Seal build, right? If we go back up and look at his Poison ability, we're looking at, or Poison Charge, I'm sorry. It gives you the chance to inflict poison. And then he also does have this innate damage to enemies with the status element plus 20%. Don't forget that these when set abilities are active 100% of the time as long as the skill is turned on, right? This is not set, this is set. So it's only the first part of these seals that activate when you cast the magic spell. The when set abilities active 100% of the time as long as the skill is turned on. Very useful to note, makes Ardeen absolutely ridiculous when you start thinking about that. But now going back down, right? I wouldn't personally put Anula Melf on Ardeen because that cost 10 SC that decreases the amount of status ailment resistance that enemies have in order for you to cat to inflict your status ailments much more easily which could then allow you to take advantage of terror mouth but um, I would recommend having a designated support unit use Anula mouth and then have things like terror mouth and switching to seal the poison charge seal on Ardeen in order to take advantage of that strategy if you're using it however I'm not going to be doing that because that's a lot more work than just like the backstab strategy. Could I do both of these also? Absolutely. Uh, that would be another 10 SC, but we're getting close to that 92, and there's some other skills that I know that I want to be using, so I'm pretty confident with backstab and surprise attack using those as my first uh, boosters for damage with Ardeen in particular. Moving on, right, Maglion shield, head bash, immovable object, that's not really going to help us with the key areas that I mentioned, right? We want to be hitting damage caps, we want him to have self-sustain, and we want him to be speedy uh, with good MP, uh, with a good MP pool to take advantage of everything. So continuing to move forward, we're going to skip past like physical and magical damage, healing, strong remedies, kind of niche, but uh, regenerate MP and boost skill recovery when uh, while inflicted with a status helmet. That's very reliant on the enemies being able to inflict status helmets on us, so it's a little too conditional for my liking. Piercing isn't a bad skill to use if you are lacking a lot of other damage boosters. However, for 7 SC and it's only a chance to reduce the enemy resistances, it's something that I skip over a lot more often than not. Holy Aura is a bit of an overrated skill because of the stat argument that I mentioned before. This is not going to give you a lot of return for 9SC, so definitely skipping over that. Triple impact, like I said, don't try and get cheeky. Goddess Kiss does not proc off of extra attacks. Uh, dual wield, we're getting into some more damage multipliers, so immediately uh, we know Ardeen. I'm going to be using a sword on him since he comes innately with sword high boost. We're going to go ahead and stack sword boost because these do stack, right? Your boosts do stack. The stats, right? Your brave skills, those don't stack, but your boosts, they do stack. Uh, another decent option would be to use Machine High Boost since he doesn't come with that innately for an extra 20% damage. For 9SC, it's a bit costly for 20% damage. However, I think in this general build that we're going to be using to start, it's a very, very good move. So now we get into the skill stock sustain abilities, right? Different skills that can increase your skill stocks and give you skill charge at the start of battle. Now here's the thing, because we know we're going into wave by wave content, and upon wave two, we're gonna be starting with the max amount of skill stocks available to Ardeen, increasing those amounts of skill stock only further propel the amount of DPS that Ardeen has available to him because now you have an extra set amount of hits that are dealing the amount of damage that Ardeen can. So 
Sorry for overstepping now, but I'm definitely equipping stock skill 2 because we know already that his skill 2 is one of his most ridiculous broken abilities, so I want the most amount of stocks to spam from that. And of course I'm going to be using purple orb, because that's giving a plus 1 stock in all of his skills. As soon as we load into the next wave, we're going to have a ridiculous amount of skill stock to use. However, I'm trying to justify explaining to you the ideology of building these units so that you can use the skills that you have available to you appropriately. There's a reason why Purple Orb is one of the most sought out skills from the DMC collab, which hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll be getting a rerun for soon. But it's because it enables like a character like Ardeen here to have a ridiculous amount of skills to spam immediately for ridiculous burst damage. When you see tweaks in his super end game showcases, how does he have so much skill stock? How does he have all of it ready to just burst down? Meanwhile, I'm loading into the battle with nothing available. It's due to the reasons I'm trying to explain throughout this building process. Thinking about skill stock sustain with Pose of Glory, Pirate's Feast, Phone Booth, which is further down here, uh, that's going to give you a ton of skill stock when you load into a boss battle, regardless of how many waves there are, right? And sadly, those kinds of things aren't available if you just started the game, but those are OP effects you should be on the lookout for. And in the meantime, use things like your stock skill increases here. Use things like your skill charges if you don't have Pirate's Feast. And even now, I'm going to equip this skill charge 1 because Pirate's Feast is not going to come into play until Wave 2. So on Wave 1, I don't want Ardeen to kind of be a sitting duck just having to do auto attacks. I want him to start out with a little bit of skill stock to start dealing really good damage off out of the gate. So skill charge 1 is going to allow me to start the battle any battle I'm in with some nice skill stock to use immediately and then once we clear that wave one wave two and on we're going to be able to dump a ridiculous amount of damage out immediately and as you can see we are already at the end of our skill cost pool 91 out of 92 we have one in reserve so at that point you think what are some easy one sc skills well like we're already using high speed shopkeep we're already using fast speed so by default, I usually go back up to the stats, and then this is when I would give, like, Ardeen an extra uh, stat up. We're going to give him an MP up right here, 5%, not the craziest boost, but does allow us to fulfill that 92 out of 92 SC. And that is going to give us a complete Ardeen skill build for general DPS wave clearing content. We've now made up in the areas that we discussed, right? We gave him some extra speed, we made up for his lack of sustain in HP and MP, and skill stocks of course, and we gave him some extra damage multipliers in order to fully reach that damage cap, right? In sword boost, machine high boost, uh, backstab, surprise attack, and that is going to be a very, very nice build for our boy Ardeen. I'll go ahead and scroll through so you can see everything that this man is including. Now, here's the thing. I didn't include, I didn't keep that 9SC for uh, a Slayer ability, which is going to be pretty, pretty important and something I should think about. So at that point, if you know you're going to need a Slayer, that's where you kind of go back into your build, start rearranging things and think, what kind of battle am I going into? What isn't super necessary, right? If I take away pride, then I only need another 5SC to make up for whichever slayer that I want. And it's not super necessary. But of course, we're kind of doing a general build, just building off of our Dean's base kit. So we're going to keep what we have. Moving on to equipment. My god, this video is ridiculously long. And I am so sorry for anyone who doesn't like it. But just think of it as an extra Buddha podcast. We're moving on to equipment. What does Ardeen want? Well, we know that Ardeen is going to be utilizing swords and machines to the best of his ability. Since those are the boosts that come innate in his kit. And that we've further built off of. So we've got plenty of options, right? Sword wielders, they have it good in the in lc they're living life they're living with a full tummy you have incredible options already with our dean like i said remember with your normal attacks 
you're going to be playing off of the element that the weapon is. So for example, you can see Scarlet Blade, there's no element right here. That means it's a no attribute weapon. Versus God Blade Kagutsuchi, as you see the fire element, that means it's the fire element. So any fire boosts that a weapon that, an, that a character comes with, God Blade is going to boost the normal attack damage for that specific hit. Whereas for Ardeen, it's amazing because there are so many busted, no attribute weapons that we are going to take advantage of those goddess kiss procs very nicely. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give him Pure Blade Muramasa, no attribute, I have it at plus 40, gives another physical attack damage plus 25%, so even more damage mods. Of course, Scarlet Blade is a great option for some extra damage cap if you're not going the Dragon Buster route, but since I want to ensure that I'm getting as close and if not hitting damage cap as possible, I want all of the physical attack damage multipliers that I can get. So boom, we're going to be using this. Now armor, don't get mistaken, we're a dual wielder, so we don't look at armor. We're looking at more weapons. Now here's the thing, our Dean's second weapon, you want to be a machine type. And as we discussed in the podcast, it's kind of tricky in Last Claudia if you're not using Trishula. Trishula, the most broken weapon in the game for elemental attackers, is not very relevant for our Dean because you might be thinking, oh, well, maybe I'll throw this on him so then I can switch to my flame call and then my fire attacks aren't resisted. Well, if you want Ardeen to be using flame call, that's only in the situation where the enemy is already weak to the element. Other than that, you should just be staying at no attribute. So Trishul is out of the question. You don't want to be running this on this man. Free to play options, there's not that many. Tech Blade is going to help with his S2 since it is long range, but it doesn't really do anything for his S1 and 3, and it doesn't have the best stats. It's only a 50% increase to damage for your longest range possible. So, I would recommend Tech Blade if you don't have the man's paid gear, which your boy does, yes. I have officially gone back on all of the shit talking I've done. Because Ardeen, first of all, is my favorite character. Second of all, the Buddha Gang sponsored exactly enough summons to get both of Ardeen's paid gear. And three, this is the best machine weapon in slot. It's a no attribute machine type weapon. And the effects it gives on top of 264 strength and 30 MP, an extra crit rate 5%, an extra 15% physical and special damage, an extra damage cap. I mean, there's really not a better machine to use for this man. Like, there's, there's nothing even comes close. However, if we scroll down, I do want to give you some other options, of course. But again, you're not really going to like them too, too much. A lot of them are collab specific. Ebony and Ivory, it's a decent strength stat with a little mind, and it gives you physical attack damage increased by 8% to the set. Uh, Typings, as you can see. Um, bluff of a gun. Enemies are more likely to faint. We don't really care about that effect. What we do like is that it gives 50 MP. The strength and int stat, kind of irrelevant. It's, re it's mainly the MP stat stick that's going to help Ardeen a ton. And whatever. Enemies are more likely to faint. If you're not already killing the enemies immediately, putting them into a faint state will give you extra damage because Ardeen has those chance drive and that extra seal effect that come. Mega Dragon Veldis, while it's a thunder element, so it's not going to help you with Goddess Kiss procs as much, it's going to give you an extra thunder damage attack. Again, it's elemental, so it is a bit restrictive. However, in most scenarios, this will be just fine to equip on him, uh, given an extra strength plus 169. The end stat's pretty irrelevant. Hawkeye's Gun, you can use if you're around for the Full Metal Alchemist collab. Chance for regular attacks to insta-kill. I mean, that's an okay effect. And the last one I wanted to mention is, I think, this one. Uh, Luke Julian. Physical attacks have a chance to temporarily inflict strength and defense mind debuff. So, I mean, that can be useful. Uh, especially since Ardeen has very high hit counts in his physical attack, so the chances of you inflicting the debuff increase substantially. And actually, now that I'm looking at it, we did just get the Ninja Star, a chance to blind enemies when a regular attack is performed if you want to go the route of a status ailment inflicting build with Ardeen to take advantage of Terra Melt damage multipliers 
and his uh, poison seal, you can then add the ninja star to give a second status ailment available to be inflicted upon the enemy. And it's no attribute. So there's a couple different machine recommendations. However, we're going to be sticking with the paid gear because it's undoubtedly the best weapon in slot. Looking at accessories, the man also has a plethora of options. Speed shoes, very easy to get and going to give another plus two speed. So we like that. Uh, what I like is a kind of middle ground. We're going to give him Mithril Relief, because when a sword is equipped, we get movement speed and um, some more skill damage, plus 10%. So more damage multipliers, plus one speed. I like Mithril Relief on Ardeen a lot. So now I think we're sitting at plus eight speed in his base load-in kit. And for the final accessory, again, some more options that I'll bring up. If you want to give him a revive proc, depending on how, because we're not using the skill decoy, Green Diamond, sure. Some extra damage cap if we're not going the Dragon Buster route. Hail Sovereign's Ring. Equilibrium Sphere, an end game piece of gear, but free to grind and gives plus 15% extra damage to his physical attacks. Super duper nice. And honestly, any high MP accessories that you can find, if we go ahead and switch over, like even Slap and Brooch of the Seven Butterflies, uh, that's going to give continuous regeneration a magic barrier. But more importantly, as I'm pointing out, it's the MP that we're looking at. The more MP you can slap on this man in the form of equipment is not going to hurt. It's only going to enhance his performance. Because of that, we're going to be going with the second piece of paid gear. Since I bought it, since your boy sacrificed his integrity, we're, I'll be damned if we don't use it. So Outlaw's Buckle, of course, another piece of gear that synchronizes ridiculously well with Ardeen. Gives that 50 MP, nice uh, HP stat, 52 strength. Chance to nullify physical damage taken. That's another layer on top of Illusion and Sand Step for Ardeen to now avoid physical attacks being taken. But it's mainly the next part that's ridiculous to me. Boost the maximum skill stock of the third skill. His S3 gets another skill stock. With Purple Orb, with this, the man is sitting at six skill stock innately absolutely absurd and then gives for because why not an extra 15 percent bump to his mp so stupid this equipment build ridiculous gave you some alternatives but this is what we're going to be rocking for this general dps build on our team and oh my god it is finally time to take Ardeen into some battles the timestamps will be there so you can build <clears throat> So you can skip to this part just to see him in action. That is by far the longest explanation I've ever give in a character building video. This is going to be a nightmare to upload. However, we are here. Encroaching Dead Hard Mode is the skill, is the stage that I like to take my first general DPS build into in order to test a difficult set amount of enemies in wave by wave content. Uh, so let's go ahead. No support. We're going to be taking this man in solo. Arc suggestions. Now that we've already gone over the build and the weapons, uh, what are some good arcs on Ardeen? Well, since we have a pretty nice crit build on him, always the general DPS arc recommendations apply to Ardeen as well. Let me take off the filter so that we can see everything available to us. Icy Guardian, of course, is always going to be nice. Uh, because it's going to give you those extra attacks, those 48 to 50% worth of damage extra on each critical that you perform. It's always going to be nice. And it's going to give him an extra uh, critical damage multiplier and some fire and ice resistances on top of that. Icy Guardian is still one of the best DPS arcs to date. Always a good default to throw on your DPS. Swordsman's Tail, not bad at all. Physical damage boost proportional to enemy size. If you're fighting a very big boss, gets up to plus 40% and then kind of scales in between there. But at minimum, you're going to be getting some extra physical damage for whatever enemy you're fighting. Boost movement speed so it can give uh, Ardeen even more speed there. And each wave, damage from first skill used, plus 50%. So Silver Gray Swordsman, another great DPS arc. Phoenix Blow, very popular er early game, one that I used religiously. Break plus 100%. Ardeen has decent break, and even more decent break if you switch to his power charge, no, I'm sorry, his heavy charge seal. Uh, upon enemy defeat, special gauge plus 10% is whatever, but skill damage plus 25%. Gonna make his S1, 2, and 3 slap even harder 
which we like a lot. And of course, pay attention, I'm not really calling it out, but the stat increases are very nice on these arcs as well. Skyship Lomvalion, I think, shouldn't be overlooked as well. Uh, battle start automatic barrier, 25% chance to avoid some stat debuffs from active skills. So it's going to give uh, Ardeen a little layer of protection just by equipping this arc. But then also neutral attack damage plus 25%. So in the case that you are just running base no attribute Ardeen, you're going to get extra damage. And you're going to get not the greatest stats, but it gives 44 extra MP. So a pretty decent, I'm not going to say like above average, but a decent MP stat to equip our Dean with if you're not if you don't have any other better options moving on to some more limited things of course we're gonna go into the uh, URs that we have available to us personally my favorite arc for our Dean is Council of Ten yes an arc that has been really pooped on by the community works extremely well for our Dean you're gonna see I did a pre-recording showcase of Ardeen in multiplayer using Council of Ten and actually in that build is a bit scuffed because I think I used Fast Critical and didn't realize that until today. However, getting back on track, Council of Ten offers two things that are insanely ridiculous for Ardeen. One, the arc skill, right? This is going to allow for that easy recovery for your skill stocks. And unfortunately, I can't take advantage of it, and a lot of players aren't able to take advantage of it. But in the rare chance, or in the rare case, that you are able to build up to a level 10 Council of 10 arc skill, when you use it for that wave, Ardeen then gains an extra skill stock on all of his skills. Meaning, with Purple Orb, with his Paid Gear, with Stock Skill 2, and then with Council of 10, the man has, I think, a whopping seven charges in his S2 and S3. That's 14 skills to unload, 24 hits in seven stocks, and then like 32 hits in another seven stocks. DPS ridiculous monstrous. And then going back to the arc trait, the only one I care about is the extra damage cap, plus 2,000. Ardeen definitely does need some help in damage cap if you're not going the Dragon Buster route. So this damage cap being universal means that it is going to increase his uh, cap for not only his no attribute, but also on top of his flame and stone call seals if you want to go that route. And then of course the stats. The only one that sucks is the MP, doesn't help him at all, but for the aforementioned benefits that I gave this, I love this arc on him. But what we're going to be running, and another incredible arc, which is free to grind, right? You beat Vaz, you get this arc, is Vaz Occulted God. Uh, some very nice stats, as you can see above me. 2400 HP, the strength and defense over 400, and then MP26 isn't the greatest, as you can see. However, the arc trait, when physically attacking damage plus 40%, if not hitting a weak attribute and critical hits or killer slash slayer effects do not activate. So because Ardeen only has two innate slayers, by having this ability equipped, all of his white damage is going to have plus 40% damage to the enemies that aren't falling within his slayer effects, which span a lot, right? There's what, 16, 17 typings, one of those two. So 14 of your typings, you're getting that 40% damage boost. Uh, five seconds after battle start, remove any debuffs that he has and then no attribute attack damage cap plus 2000. So not relevant to his other flame and stone call, but his base kit, which we are gonna be using, is getting that extra damage cap. Incredible, 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 incredible arc for him. 309 mind also, by the way. So we're gonna be using Vaz on our boy Ardeen, and that is going to be the general DPS. Limited end game build, however, hopefully my explanation in how you want to make up for where Ardeen is lacking will help you use the skills available to you to build a very effective build. With that being said, let's take this man into battle. I have been recording for an hour and 18 minutes with that explanation. That's absurd. You guys let me know if you like this format, right? I really want these build showcases to uh, help out new players mainly end game players they don't need my help so doing real quick end game showcases 
it's not really benefiting anyone because the endgame players don't need my help. New players really need and are on the lookout for our Dean build showcases and the ideology behind how you do your builds. With that explanation out of the way, let's get to work. Uh, I was mistaken. I thought our Dean started with two skill stocks with skill charge, but he starts with about one and uh, three fourths. So we're going to use Jet Sting, hopefully get some kills right out of the gate and recharge some skill stocks with Pose of Glory. So boom, Jet Sting right here. Uh, we didn't quite get a kill, but we did charge up real quick and we're able to get right back into battle. Uh, we are not getting damage cap. There was a damage cap. I think when we're getting behind the enemies, we are absolutely getting damage cap, but not quite able to get there without um, some other help. So still very good, but now as you can see, we've got Crazy Caliber, Assault Trip, Jet Sting, all of them are completely charged with Pirate's Feast. That's why it's just a ridiculous ability. Here's what I do want to do. I'm going to activate Insurrectionary Anima to decrease these enemies defenses by minus 20%. Hopefully that will allow us to hit damage cap easier. Let's run behind, or let's use a jet sting to get behind the enemies and then just crazy caliber our way to victory, shall we? Crazy caliber is, I, in my opinion, his best and most fun, it's one of the most fun skills to use in the entire game. It's got a real nice AOE, it's super spammable, and there's just really no complaints I have about it. Let's use jet sting to try and get behind the enemy and just start crazy calibering our way to victory. We are fighting the turtles and the stones, which have ridiculously boosted defenses. Keep that in mind when you're seeing like sub 10,000 K hits. Uh, let's keep on activating insurrectionary anima. Um, jet sting, get behind the enemies and crazy caliber to finish it off. We're seeing some crit caps, uh, not quite a ton of white caps. However, the damage is still insanity especially for soloing. Now we're getting into the tricky stage. Remember, these mobs are not flinchable. They spam attacks like insanity. And so we are at risk. We're at risk. We have a lot of sustain, right? We have Awaken. We have Indomitable Spirit in case we get fainted. But we're going to see if we can deal amount, the amount of damage needed, which I really do think we'll be able to do. First, we're going to start by lowering their defenses. And then we'll go ahead and just... I'm crazy calibering. I don't want to, like, waste any time. It's lagging steam. That's how freaking nuts. Let's use some assault trips. Um, but as you can see, the uh, these mobs are extremely annoying. We're definitely going to get flinched. Let's go ahead and use his special. This is a no attribute attack. I haven't seen it. It starts off targeting one enemy but then does switch to an AOE. So maybe we can snag some kills. We got really close. We got really close. Yeah, see, when they start launching off spells and all this nonsense, that's when it gets really tricky. However, we were able to deal enough damage to avoid getting fainted. Uh, it's impressive, y'all. It's impressive. Other characters have had better showcases than Ardeen, but considering like we didn't tailor his Slayer specific, we would have needed to equip God Slayer. We didn't tailor him for that. We were able to sustain our HP with Proud Force. His skills are so quick that they weren't getting interrupted fast enough to not take advantage of good sustain. And the damage was there in order to get the job done against those extremely tanky defensive and annoying mobs. So right there, soloing that stage really does prove a lot. Um, Ardeen doesn't have like super armor or any of that, so I'm really happy with that showcase. Really happy. Okay, so it's your boy Buddha from the past actually recording this before I start the official showcase video because I don't think I'm going to be able to do this exact boss fight, which I have been doing and have been enjoying a lot. That is R. Dean versus the Kraken multiplayer boss. Now, I've heard or I've seen a comment in particular that points out that because R. Dean has this OP ability against Dragon type specifically, that that's going to take away from this player's experience with him outside of fighting dragons. And 
I want to do this exact battle to just show that it's simply not going to be the case. The thing with Ardeen, it's not that he deals great damage against dragons and then underwhelming damage against everything else. He deals very, very top tier damage against the entire game and then a ridiculous OP amount of damage against dragons, making that discrepancy not as big of a deal when you really get him into your hands and start to play. So I'm going to show off the build, of course, taking Ardeen into the Kraken multiplayer boss fight and explain my logic, right? Uh, we just built him in order to tank the Kraken's hits and deal cap damage 100% of the time in a very easy and fun manner, especially because of the skills and abilities that Ardeen comes with innately. So of course we're going to ignore everything with 0SC, that is what Ardeen comes with innately. I did give him 2 NP ups as you can see, uh, Proud Force of course for the sustained Fish Slayer. That's the thing with Ardeen, he only comes with technically this Soldier Mastery Slayer effectiveness against snipers and then that Dragon Buster physical attacks effective against dragons innately. So you do need to add the appropriate Slayers on him since we're fighting fish. That's why we have Fish Slayer, Fast Speed, because with your PDPS, I like my character Speedy. Awaken's pretty important, I've noticed, at least for this stage in particular with Ardeen here. Uh, then we gave him Pose of Glory. Mm, Pirate's Feast, very important. Goddess Kiss for those MP regens. Surprise Attack and Backstab. This is going to synchronize very, very well with his S1, as you're going to see, because his S1 acts as one of those placement skills to put him directly behind the enemy if available. So very, very nice there. Sword boost for an extra 10% damage for 4 SC. Stock skill too, because we want all the stocks, especially with Pirate's Feast, Purple Orb for that 11 SC. Hopefully if a DMC rerun comes in the near future, which a lot of us are speculating is possible, you will have your chance to grab this limited, limited skill that's OP. Uh, sharp Eyes for the extra damage because we definitely can make up that MP drainage with Goddess Kiss since he is so good at it. Uh, and High Speed Shot Keep, another uh, near automata collab limited skill, but incredible for speed builds. And that's going to take up the 92 out of 92 SC. Of course, this is just a reference build. Uh, you'll have to make your adjustments accordingly depending on what you have, but this is the exact build I'm running then for equipment. You can see that we're running some very, very limited things. People are going to get mad, but of course you can always replace these items with whatever you have. We have the Scarlet Blade and Mithril Relief, which are going to be accessible for the majority of player base, uh, player end game player bases, I should say, that have the AER available from the arc here, uh, which is going to give us some more movement speed and skill damage plus 10% since we are equipping Scarlet Blade, which... Uh, every account will get eventually as long as you're doing summons uh, you will be able to get crimson ore buy this out of the crimson ore shop we like these cap raising on our dean because he doesn't have the biggest cap raise in the world especially without that dragon buster technique so and he's a dual wield unit so any uh physical attack damage cap raises we're gonna appreciate he's gonna appreciate because he's gonna double all of them essentially and then i am running his paid gear because I have it. He's the first unit that I sacrificed my resolve for to get these ridiculously OP abilities on him. Of course, the Raven Shot is an incredible no attribute weapon for those Goddess Kiss procs, and the effect is just insane compared to the other machines that we have available to us. And then Outlaw's Buckle gives us a um, chance to nullify physical damage taken as whatever, but then gives us stock skill 3 for an extra stock there and an MP plus 15% on top of all of the stat boosts that these equips give as well. So that's going to be the equipment we run on him. So let's go ahead and start the room and I'll cut back when we're ready to go. All right, here we go. We do have some pretty potent DPS on this rotation with Lance Veil and A2, but I'm confident that you're going to see the consistent damage caps from Ardeen and the impact that he has on overall DPS in the showcase. I was kind of hoping we'd get more supports in this pickup group than normal so that there was no excuse as to Ardeen's performance, but it is what it is. So with this build, because I'm not starting with any skill charges, we do kind of have to suffer through some normal attacks until we get a Jet Sting. Then we can rely on Pose of Glory to, tr I was going to say, hopefully get us some more skill stocks, but... Luckily we had uh, the Lance Veil and A2 to mop up while we just kind of sat there. 
But now that we have Pirate Sweeps, we're going to load into each next wave with full skill stocks, and I'm just going to blast the S2, which is by far his most fun and favorite skill that he has, I think, of anyone. Right? Just super quick 24 hits all at once, which is going to look especially impressive against this boss. I'm not even going to use his anima. We're not going to use any other seals than what Ardine is starting out with. And we're going to wait to use that arc skill effect until a certain time. So the S1's immediately going to position us behind Kraken. And then we can just start spamming this S2, which we are also getting damage back. Don't forget, we're getting damage back off of that quick reload skill. So once he gets down, he's at that HP threshold. Uh, I'm going to try and do some assault trips. Actually, I'm going to use S1 to get behind him again so we can take advantage of backstab. And then do some normal attacks. I want you to pay attention to that MP regen. Well, sadly, he did uh, get us. We got him to this phase quicker than I wanted to. Uh, but we're gonna. Here's where we're gonna use Council of Ten because now we're gonna get a ton of skill stock back. We're positioned behind the Kraken, and we're free to just completely finish this match off. Immediately done. It looks like Cole. I'm sorry. The A2 did get this killing blow which is unfortunate but if you saw those consistent 25,000 caps those were coming from us those were dual wield hits I'm gonna try and remember to throw up exactly how much DPS we are putting out with each skill stock of uh, our Dean's skill 2 and skill 3 so that that's up and you can get an actual visual representation of the amount of damage that he's putting out with each skill stock expended and don't forget with his paid gear and with that council he's getting a ridiculous amount of stocks in both his s2 and s3 especially because we also are using stock, stock skill 2 going to be very important to just maximize the amount of stocks on this guy to make him look incredible i didn't quite get to show it but hopefully i'll show it in another battle tomorrow when i'm actually starting the filming of our dean showcase but his goddess kiss regen procs are ridiculous i've regen 400 mp at a time so his mp drainage i know is a concern to a lot of people looking at his kit but as long as you got goddess kiss and two solid no attribute weapons on him you're gonna be just fine oh, okay y'all so you guys got a glimpse of how i've been using ardine in multiplayer with council of 10 and i want to wrap up the showcase with a battle that's only available once, but that I have been saving for this video since I learned about it. And we have a very tailored build. It wouldn't be an Ardeen showcase without showing how racist he is against dragons. And fingers crossed, your boy is able to achieve that Dragon Buster 59,999 damage cap with the build we have currently. We're going to be taking on a group of like five or six different pretty end game dragon mobs and the goal is of course to be seeing consistent max caps with the help of support and a ridiculous amount of setup so ardeen does need a lot of help like i was mentioning to reach that dragon buster cap so we've changed a couple of things for one this is a one wave fight so we're not dealing with multiple waves which makes Pirate's Feast absolutely irrelevant. So we're taking that off, stripping that away, we get that SC back, and then some other things have been rearranged. Because Dragon Buster does require so much MP, I did uh, give him MP up three for two SC, which is an extra 12%, right? We're using 50 MP per hit. Gave him, as you can see, an extra eight SC in attack ups because we do need to ensure that our attack stat meets the level at which the damage multipliers can multiply it up to that 59,999 per hit. I kept Proud Force for the sustain because we did keep uh, both Pride and Pride 2 again for that 50% uh, strength increase. I didn't equip no attribute attack raise 1 for that 11 SC because I figured we could use the SC that I saved to get a more return on other uh, skills, other damage multipliers like Sky High and Sky Lord. If I'm not mistaken, these enemies are considered in the air. 
So we should be able to take uh, advantage of a considerable amount of damage multipliers. With this build, guys, I am just trying to stack all damage multipliers possible on my man and let the other support characters I have deal with like skill stock sustain, healing sustain, things like that. Surprise attack and backstab, of course. I still have the weapon boosts that were on him previously. Still have purple orb and stock skill too, but I did take off stock skill, or I took off skill charge one for that 3SC in order to let the other support characters just recharge the SCT. We also took off awaken. Uh, another big sustain skill that I don't think is needed here because of the other team comp that we have. So with all that SC, I did give him sharp eyes, and your boy forgot to use sharp eyes in the first build, or in the first showcase. Uh, if I was thinking straight and I hadn't been talking for an hour, I would have taken off machine high boost in order to equip sharp eyes. Uh, while that is going to drain his MP at a faster rate, Guys, it's absolutely worth it. Like I said, if you're using Goddess Kiss, which is the other skill that I took off of this build, big SC saves there. If you're using Goddess Kiss, you don't need to worry about the MP drainage. I'm telling you, Ardeen can get it back like that. I didn't showcase it, uh, sadly, in either of my builds because I wasn't able to get it off in time. However, just trust me, believe me, take my word, take your boy Buddha's word. The MP sustain with Goddess Kiss and two no attribute weapons covers all the MP usage you're going to be doing. However, in this showcase, we're hoping to kill the mobs before we run out of MP. That's the goal. So Goddess Kiss is not here. It's been replaced with things like Sharp Eyes and the stat ups that you saw earlier. Oh, and Berserker, right? Somehow, I'm like trying to figure out how much SC did I freaking save, but we also have Berserker for that plus 30% extra damage, which at that continual HP drain should be made up through the Proud Force heals that we're going to be getting in order to stay at max HP for the Pride skills, right? Everything works in synchronicity. I don't think that's a word, but I said it. And we're going to see if we can get the job done. Uh, especially, equips are the same that we saw, except for Equilibrium Sphere. I did replace his paid gear for 15% extra physical damage for the no attribute skill uh, so we're keeping this setup every th all, the other three are the same and in terms of the arc i did switch to the silver gray swordsman i need to go ahead and collect my sparkles um we're going to use be using the silver gray swordsman because these dragon mobs are very large so i am fairly certain we should at least be getting 30 to 40 percent extra damage by using this ability and since we took off high speed shopkeep, we're making up a little bit of speed with this uh, arc right here. In terms of support, we're bringing beefy, beefy stuff, guys. We're using XBet as a WAP spammer. Uh, that is the only thing that's worth showing here. Winry's Apple Pie, we're going to cast that immediately. Get all skill stocks on our boy Ardeen so he can get to spamming right away. And then Tinkili is there for the extra damage cap, or not the extra damage cap, excuse me, because that's not relevant here. She is there for the physical damage bonus, because don't forget, X-Bet, I think, gives strength to the uh, unit that she's buffing. No, she doesn't. She gives a Slayer damage boost of plus 30%, which we are going to have since we're fighting dragons. Her damage cap is not going to be relevant here, and neither is Tinkili's. However, they are also giving physical damage multiply buffs uh, or multipliers to Ardeen, which should hopefully propel him. Like I said, the whole goal of this is for super consistent caps. Don't forget, I don't want you to think that I'm trying to pull one over on you. Theopolis does debuff the enemy's defense and mind by minus 50% at the start of battle for 10 seconds. So hopefully, like I'm saying... All of these different things are resulting in crazy caps. And also, this is good for anyone wondering, like, if you try this and you're not able to do it, your boy is walking in here stacked with a ton, a ton, a ton of stuff. But these are the types of things that you want to be on the lookout for when you're figuring out what to pull, what you're trying to do, what strategies you're doing in order to achieve these goals, right? Stupid damage multipliers, stupid defensive lowering, and we're going to be using the insurrectionary anima that our boy comes with. So, 
What battle am I talking about in particular? We're looking at the new map Grandar. Spoiler alert, I think it's too late for that now, but it's this little node right here because we did leave off on that party comp, we should load into this battle with the team that I just explained. So hopefully everything goes well. We know that we are starting by casting WAP, and your boy is actually going to try and use the Theopolis skill in order to group these guys together. So here's what we want to do. We're going to do WAP and Beast Hunter. Why not? We're going to use WAP on our Dean. We're going to use Beast Hunter. Actually, we're going to use... Well, yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. I don't think they drop anything. We're going to use Insurrectionary Anima. We're going to use Dragon Buster. I don't think I got it off. I don't think I got that off either. Got Dragon Buster off. And now we're going to use Theopolis in order to group them together, hopefully. And then I'm not going to worry about backstab just because I'm a little worried about these guys moving immediately. So I'm just going to start with Crazy Calibers. Let's see what we can do. Look at the damage, y'all. Oh my lord in heaven. Oh <laughs> Not so much of a clean run, but uh, I didn't even look at the HP stat, so I'll be watching that back during edits. But my god, what did we get extra memories grand dog for? I haven't actually looked at these, but wow. 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 <laughs> That is the full power of a racist RD right there. Holy cow. Here's another one. I'm not going to do it yet. Just because I want to let that be the end of the showcase. Go back to the home screen. Guys, our Dean is absurd. Ridiculous on his own. And then extremely, extremely OP in a niche part of the game, which I'm a huge fan of. Very happy with this showcase. It's going to be a long motherfucker, so a lot of editing, hopefully, to chop it down to hopefully an hour, but you guys will see when I upload it. Hopefully, it helps out a lot of new players with not only building our Dean, but just their ideology in building units in general. I think I tried to cover a lot of things. Got it all out in this video. And that's all I got for you this time. Guys, let me know what you think of everything in the comments. Any further thoughts? Go vote on my community poll right now. Which collab would you like to see rerun for the characters to get their five stars uh, this year? Last Claudia, Barlene did ask in the uh, Last Claudia Discord chat. And so I figured why not make a community poll out of it and see what you guys think. A lot of you probably already saw it, but... I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. Like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, turn on all notifications. Y'all know the drill. And with all that being said, guys, y'all know what we say. Work hard, play harder. See you in the next video.